So I'll just draw like a little square on the page like this. I'll just say put in a little horizon line like this. So the horizon line, you know, it's having to explain all these things can be tricky at times, but um, the horizon line is essentially where the sky meets the earth. So we don't often think about these things when we're out, out in nature. We just sort of look around and what have you. But um, just, a, just a line, you know, I tend to put it uh, a little bit, uh, just not halfway through the page, but a little bit less than halfway through the page. <laughs> so that's, that's what we're going to imagine is kind of where the mountain's going to be. Okay. And um, yeah, just draw some kind of something like that. You want like a little mountain off in the distance. So pretty basic. Pick up a uh, pick up that larger brush you got. Okay, so it's just you know you kind of you might have a flat brush, a, a brush that has like a flat edge, or you might have one that's kind of like this or a little bit larger. Um, just as long as it can pick up enough water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of that cerulean blue, get that light blue color. Okay, put that light blue color, and just um, mix it up here in the palette. And you might be able to see. Shift this up, okay. And um, in terms of the water concentration, you just want to add enough water so that it um, creates a large amount of. Because we're thinking about we're going to do this area of the sky. So when you're mixing up water, you've got to make sure you mix up enough to cover that area of sky. <laughs> so bit of bit of that bit of that blue, okay. And then we can just drop that straight in like this. Okay. And that's it. So that's wet on dry. So you'll notice as you're doing, as you're adding it in, it adds um, the, the places that you don't paint, there's like a sharper edge. So you can do things like you can add in a bit of like a cloud or something like that. Okay. Like these white, white sort of areas in there that you leave. They can just be some clouds. You can indicate like that as a sort of sharper edges. Okay. I can just do something like this, just a few little brush strokes. Um, and what you can do as well, and uh, this is like a wet, so what we've done here is wet on dry. So we're just, you know, we're using wet paint and painting onto dry paper. So if, if you notice, this area of the sky is still kind of wet, okay? It's, you can tell because if you tilt the paper towards the light, there's a kind of like sheen to the paper, okay? So this is a kind of special, special sort of moment that you can pick up other kinds of paints. You can pick up a bit of darker paint and you can drop it in um, to create kind of darker clouds or stuff like that running through, okay? And what it does is that it kind of makes this, uh, makes these clouds or whatever these, these shapes look a bit softer, okay? So you can create this kind of softer cloud shapes. Um, if you want to put clouds in, it's no big, it's no big deal, okay? So, you know, as you notice, if you, when, as soon as you pop that slightly darker paint into the sky, um, it starts to spread. So you don't get sharp, you don't get those sharp sort of edges. It spreads quite, quite nicely. So now we come down to this area of the mountains and we'll see that like this area of the mountains that's kind of touching the sky, um, there's going to be some areas that are, that are like wet, Still, okay, that's okay. Most of that area of the sky has probably started to, to dry now. So you can actually pick up a bit of green or, um, you know, you can, if you don't have a green, you can mix up um, just like a darker green from a blue and a yellow. Mix up a bit of that, um, drop that in. I tend to, actually, tend to actually make mountains in the distance like a bluish sort of color as well. Okay, and the way you hold the brush, I, I think is, is quite, there's so many things to, it's like the keep my but when you hold the brush at the end, I find that the painting tends to look a bit more freer, a bit more looser. Um, yeah, like that's fine. Yeah, I tend to hold the brush closer in when I'm doing small details, but when, when you're painting really large areas, it helps to hold the brush at the end and use your arm to paint. So rather than use your fingers and do this sort of thing. Like, like that, um, you're kind of using more of your arms, doing larger brush strokes, trying to see, um, I guess, how you can get in uh, a shape or, or, or something in, in the least amount of brush strokes possible. It's, it's, um, 
can be tricky, but um, what I do, I just put the color in there and just see what happens. <laughs> okay, so we'll do the mountains now. So like I said, the, the mountains in the background, they have to be a little bit darker than the sky. Okay, the sky is normally the, one of the lightest parts of a painting, okay, especially during the daytime. Um, if you imagine yourself kind of looking out, if you go into the, you know, um, mountain ranges, what have you, the mountain ranges will always stand out. They'll be darker against the sky. So I always pick a darker color, you know, just drop that in like this. Okay, just a bit of, I'm just using some kind of bluish color. Uh, a lot of the time, I don't even, I don't even I know what color I'm using. <laughs> I refer to colors mainly as warm. Or cool colors so um, warm colors are more like yellows oranges reds and cool colors are more like blues greens purples that kind of thing okay so have a bit of play around add those mountains in in the back and if you let the air of the sky dry a little bit the mountains will um, have a sharp a sharp sort of edge against the sky but if you haven't waited long enough, you'll get some furry edges, which is fine too. Okay, it really just depends on uh, on on what you what you want. So sometimes people prefer softer mountains, um, having like a softer edge. Um, yeah, because it, normally when we look into the distance, objects are a little bit more blurry, uh, out of focus. There's maybe some mist and stuff like that. Um, if, for example, you have done what I've done and I've got like kind of sharper edges on uh, for the mountains, what you can do is then you can pick up a little bit of water with your brush, okay, and just dry it off on that little um, towel as well. Try to, and get used to sort of, you always, people always uh, watch me mucking around on the palette and mucking around the towel. I'm always um, changing the, uh, the wetness of the brush. So, I'll pick up a bit of clean water, dry it off a bit on the bra on the on the towel, and then I'll just touch the edge of where we have like a sharper that sharper sort of edge of the mountains, and that will create a softer softer area where it kind of goes into the background a bit. Okay, so there we go. We've got some mountains. Now let's put in some of the gr the ground. So I mean, up to you. you. Might pick up a bit of yellow. A bit of light yellow, so a bit of this uh, yellow ochre here. And use yellow ochre, and I'll just drop that straight in at the bottom, okay? Like that. And you'll notice some of it might mix into the mountains, that kind of thing. Doesn't matter, okay? So a nice flowy sort of scene, and um, where things mix together a bit, because this wash that we're doing right here it's it's really not to get in um any details or anything like that it's just to, just to create a little indication of the sky some clouds maybe some mountains in the foreground as well you will notice like i'm putting in uh you know a bit of this brown okay using that wet and wet technique so i'm just dropping in a bit of brown or a bit of uh darker color here at the front okay could indicate a bit of grass or something just like this just with the with the tip of the brush, even with these really these larger brushes that that you're using, um, you'll find that they have quite a, a sharp tip. And if you're using a flat edge brush, you can use the corner of that brush as well, sort of sharp edged. Okay, and put in a bit of that. Okay, what we can do is start pick up that smaller brush. So you know that I've asked you guys to to have a look at the pick up one of those smaller brushes. Okay, what you can do here is we can add some, uh, pick up a bit of like darker paint. So I might just pick up some of this, I mean, it's pretty dark, kind of like a, uh, a brown. You can mix together also your three primary colors, blue, yellow, and red, and that will create a pretty dark color as well. Okay, and what you can do is that you can just um, put in some indications of some branches or something coming in from the side. Okay, and, and notice how... Notice how dark that is compared to the to the background. Okay. Just yeah. 
I think in a painting, it's really important to have uh, contrasts. So we need to have areas of light and areas of darkness. So tend to, with the first wash, um, make that really, really light. And then in the second wash, I'll just start adding in the shadows, um, all the darker areas, okay? What that does is that it starts to push the area of the mountains and the sky backwards, okay? And it brings uh, these trees forward a bit. Okay, you can even do things like add like a shadow or something on the ground. Like uh, I don't know, sometimes you can imagine a light source coming from the the right hand side and just put a bit of a you know a little bit of a shadow like that for that tree. Okay, um, you can even practice and and you know put in a a little person or someone just sort of walking over in the distance. Okay, but really the 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 whole point of this is just to get used to those two techniques, um, get a bit more comfortable mixing colors around as well, because um, I find like 99% of what I paint is just using those two techniques. Um, there's stuff that you, little bits and pieces that you pick up later, you, you know, some people use uh, like a flicking technique where they flick paint on paper, um, they lift off, stuff like that. But um, those are your two, your two sort of main ones. Okay. So, so you should, yeah, you should have a, a pretty basic sort of painting.